8.30 in Kabul, 10 p.m. in Islamabad and 9.30 in Colombo. That's where Sri Lanka's government is facing new pressure to release Tamil civilians who have been held in camps since the end of the civil war in May. Human rights organizations estimate there are around a quarter of a million in total who are being prevented from going home, even though the Tamil Tigers were defeated nearly four months ago. Some of them have been allowed out. Around 2,000 were released earlier today. The BBC has not been allowed access to the camp since May, but we did obtain pictures apparently filmed inside one of them within the last month. These are the first pictures of the Sri Lankan camps that have been made available to the BBC since the fighting ended in May. Journalists are banned. Little is known about how they're run, except that most inside are not allowed to leave. The person who filmed this spoke of disease, the sick and elderly dying and of appalling sanitation, claims also made by some international aid agencies. More than 40,000 are believed to be living in this camp and more than a quarter of a million in similar camps in northern Sri Lanka. The government is under increased international pressure and has promised to let 80% of them go home by the end of the year. We can't you know, continue providing indefinitely funding if the site remains closed as it does. Uh, when that point is, I, I think it's hard to say. Uh, we have to work on the government on coming to an agreement. The best solution is obviously that the uh, people, as many people leave as soon as possible. Now it's announced that 10,000 are being allowed free. Some attended a ceremony to mark the occasion, an attempt by the government to show reconciliation after 25 years of civil war. The troops have a fine balancing act between screening out those who supported the now defeated Tamil Tiger insurgency and civilians simply caught up in the war. My son and son-in-law both died in a shell attack, she says. When the war ended, we came to this camp. I'm going back to my home in Jaffna after 18 months. I'm sad that I lost my family members, but happy to go back home. Sri Lanka's handling of criticism about the camps has been internationally condemned and prompted threats of sanctions. The camps have become a symbolic and stark reminder that Sri Lanka might have won a military victory, but it still has much to do to forge a lasting peace so that it can look forward and become a modern Asian democracy. Humphrey Hawksley, BBC News. Well, in a moment, we'll be speaking to Rajiva Wijasinghe from the Sri Lankan government. But first, a short time ago, I spoke to the person who filmed those pictures that you saw in Humphrey's report. He wants to remain anonymous, so I started the interview by asking him how he managed to get access to the camp. Um, through a friend, um, and I don't know how he managed to organise that, but, um, you know, we got into a van and we got through there. It's not a problem um, throughout the jail, without the check and all that. So, I mean, nobody stopped you from filming... Um, nobody did, but no, no one seems to know I'm actually filming, apart from those people inside the camp. But the authority didn't know actually I'm filming. And can you tell me um, th some of the things that we're seeing? What, what did you see that, uh, that shocked you? Uh, the conditions of the um, people in there, uh, most of them are families and kids. Um, lack of, um, uh, you know, uh, sanitary and uh, open sewerage. And the kids I've seen, uh, most of them got um, some sort of skin disease in there. Um, you can see the suffering in their in the faces. Um, a basic need is not there. I mean, refugee camps on the whole are pretty depressing places. I have to say that, I mean, just looking at this footage, it doesn't look that bad to me. I mean, personally, I felt it's not a refugee camp because people live in there, and you see them on the interview as well. They do have their own houses and their land to go back. And they're not actually refugees. They're happy to go to their own house if they've been released. So what you're saying is that these people are prisoners? In a way, yes. Um, they are prisoners. They are not refugees, actually. So these people are not free to leave, as far as, uh, 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 as you know? Yes, um, that's, what, that's what I've seen. And also the day before I go, there was a heavy rain. People just started leaving because the, the, the flooding started in the camp and they're not allowed to leave at all. Now, the sad fact is about this conflict is that both sides um, have engaged in propaganda. 
how do you know um, that you're not being used by the Tamil Tigers for propaganda purposes yourself? You were allowed in to take this footage. Perhaps it was selective what you were being shown. I mean, I went in as an independent guy just to see how the people are living in the camps, and I have not been influenced by anybody at all. I just went on, on a holiday. Um, so I thought this world needs to know because what I read and seen is not true inside the camp. So actually the second day I went in, that's where I took the camera with. Um, just to let the world know that it, this is going on. And those people aren't refugees to my knowledge. Not refugees, but prisoners in your view? Yes, they are. Well, joining me now in the studio is Rajiva Wajasinghe, Secretary to the Sri Lankan Ministry of Disaster Management and Human Rights. Uh, not refugees, prisoners held there against their will. What do you say to that? Well, I think in the first place they came as refugees. I think we're doing our best to make their conditions well, they as acceptable They must come there in the first place, possible. but what about now? What about now? We cannot let all of them back immediately until they've been screened and also until the areas they're going to I are free of I saw some kids bombs. on there, though. I left out a lot of 10, 11-year-old boys. Are you assuming that they're terrorists? Well, we have actually allowed youngsters and people over 60 to go. Many of them don't go because, unlike perhaps in this part of the world, people like families. They want to stay with their families. We had actually allowed 12,000 older people to leave. Only 5,000 went. Today, the National Peace Council of Sri Lanka has actually said, please don't make people go unless they're willing to go, and we will stand by that. With children, it's the same. But of course, considering the conditions under which they lived, I think they're very happy to actually get education now. Let me just say, show you some other pictures. Of course, these are as selective as any. It's a matter of how you look. These are the vocational training centers. These yes, are it's quite the, difficult to see that I'm on sorry, camera, Those actually, are the kids. But, Why don't you but, try and show uh, them? I think yes. they're really rather attractive. But I see those are the A-level students, and we had the A-levels in the camp this year. We tried to do the O-levels last year when the Tigers won had them under control. We did hold the exam in Tiger territory. The Tigers forced half of them to boycott. These are the kids. Yes, I must say, they're rather different pictures from the ones we just saw, aren't they? All looks a lot nicer there. Everyone well, looks I'm a lot not going to say that's the whole story, but I've got some mm. pictures here of those terrible tents that you saw. We have told the U.S that they're really substandard and we've actually told the UN they've got to upgrade them. The UN promised us that they would put up shelters where people could actually relax and they didn't. I had to actually be very tough with them a week ago and they've promised to do that. Things are not ideal, obviously, but well, if, if you can... if it's all so nice in there, why won't you let the BBC in? Why can't we come in and film all these people doing A-level studies? Well, now you've actually taken it. Not since it. May, we haven't. Yeah, but can I tell you what happened? I no. was one of the first who actually said let everybody in and in my March and April, many crews went in. Um, the BBC went yeah, but in I'm in a big way. talking about since the end of May. The real problem Have was... Have you got something to hide? No, it's that the well, people then why don't like... why you let us in? Because people like CNN, I'm afraid, and also some of the mm. press, have really said such nasty things. And people in Sri Lanka don't distinguish between wonderful people like you and people with a separate agenda. <laughs> and what's actually happened, I've had this myself, I've told the BBC, whenever they show something that's not so nice, they ask us well, and we can explain. CNN does not. Well, we're now, not people CNN. In Sri Lanka, perhaps you could, make, sorry, perhaps I, you could I arrange for the BBC to be allowed in so that I we wouldn't... Mean, have to use I didn't mean like CNN. This. I didn't mean CNN. I'm so sorry. I meant Channel 4. CNN has not been too bad no, at all. Not. Yeah, you're not Channel 4, but people It just looks as though you're trying to hide something, doesn't it? No, it looks to you because you're not prepared to condemn Channel 4. You did this to us last week. Channel 4 showed an appalling video, which was fraudulent. Well, this, is, this is not about Channel 4. This is about how you are handling uh, the camps. The UN has criticised you. Today, you expelled somebody from UNICEF. Because the, the UN has criticised us. Tell us when. Yes, the UN has. For the camps? But yes. Can I tell okay, you what then, the UN said? Okay, but what about UNICEF? Said. Answer UNICEF. Why did you throw out the UNICEF guy today? Because we didn't he said throw it was out the UNICEF guy. We didn't renew the visa of a youngster who had been issuing press releases that some of my colleagues, I haven't seen these, thought Saying before. children are malnourished. You I'll just don't you like people saying nasty things about what's going on in the camps. No, we did what we did last time with OCHA. This is the one that I dealt with. An OCHA release was really very nasty indeed. I spoke to the head of OCHA. She said they hadn't cleared it with her. I said, Lola, I don't really want for us to look at these, but you promised us that these releases would be checked with you. She got it withdrawn from the website. She took out the fraudulent picture. There was really one very misleading picture. And we expect senior 
senior members of the UN to actually keep their staff in order, just as you would expect us as a government to make sure that bad things are not done by some of our people. But it is very difficult to distinguish for people who, you know, I'm sure in Sri Lanka we don't distinguish between one white skin and another. I'm afraid uh, we've run out of time, but I look forward to the invitation for a BBC crew to go in there. I'd and then we love can the see BBC to be in if you Singer, don't bring you Channel 4 much. with you. Well, we won't, Thank I you. can assure you. <laughs> that would be a pleasure. Thank you.